How's it going, everybody? This is Mike. Welcome back to my channel and another episode of Movies from A to Z. So tonight we're on the letter N. I've chosen one of my favorite films of all time. This is Now Voyager from 1942, produced at Warner Brothers and starring Betty Davis in one of her signature films, for which she was once again not nominated for Best Actress. Um, great, great movie. Uh, I guess you could call this, for me, kind of a guilty pleasure, but I really don't feel guilty about loving a classic film like this. It's uh, soap opera start from, soap opera from start to finish, um, and I guess one of these movies back from the 30s and 40s that was classified as a woman's picture, uh, but I don't care. I'll be transgender. What the hell? It's a great, great movie. Betty Davis. So the story is Betty Davis plays a very repressed spinster named Charlotte Vale, who comes from a wealthy Boston family. She lives with her widowed mother, played by Gladys Cooper. Now, Mrs. Vale had this daughter late in life. She was well into her 40s, as she describes it, and the child was not wanted. Uh, she has spent her entire life with Charlotte, dominating everything about her, from the clothes she wears, the books she reads, how she does her hair, um, controlling any life that she might have, um, seeing men. Obviously, she has not been married. Um, and basically, she's turned her daughter into um, just a basket case. Charlotte is very, very un unhappy. At the beginning of the film, we see her on the verge of a nervous breakdown. So she goes away to a, a rest home, sanitarium, run by a man named Dr. Jackwith, played by Claude Rains, and he takes care of her. She's there for several months, and being away from her mother, she just starts to blossom and starts to become a different person, but she has a long way to go, and when the time of her her stay at the, the sanitarium is over, she's reluctant to go back home. She's afraid to go back to be with her mother, and of course, she feels guilty about it, but uh, the doctor suggests that instead of doing that, why don't you go on um, a, a cruise? He has a chance to uh, get her on a cruise. A, a woman who was going to go had that book passage, but she has not been able to go. So Charlotte is able to basically step into her place. And um, so she does that. And while she's on this cruise, she's first very shy about coming out of her cabin and meeting people. But eventually she does, and she meets a man named Jerry Durrance, played by Paul Henry, who is a very unhappily married man with two daughters. And they become friends, and then they, they fall in love, and they have an affair during the time of the trip. And then, of course, they have to part. He has to go back to his family, and she has to go back to her mother. So she does, but uh, she, she's very much a different person. And now that she has this this confidence that has come from this affair she had with this man, she is able to face her mother and stand up to her. And the re so the relationship changes. And I don't want to give away too much. Uh, it, it's, it's a story about romance, but it's also about a, a person, it could be a man or a woman, it doesn't matter, a person learning how to who stand up to stand up for themselves and make a better life for themselves in the midst of adversity and um, learning how to be confident uh, and find love and happiness. It's a it's a beautiful story. It has a lot of sadness to it, but it also has a lot of uh, a lot of hope. A lot of hope. So it's a great film. It was also. Um, Let's see, it won an Academy Award for the best musical score for a, a drama or comedy by Max Steiner, one of the most famous names at Warner Brothers during those years. And Gladys Cooper was also nominated for Best Supporting Actress. Now, the film was produced by Hal Wallace, directed by Irving Rapper. Hal Wallace had originally wanted to cast either Irene Dunn, Norma Shearer, or Ginger Rogers as Charlotte Vale, and none of those actresses were under contract to Warner Brothers. And Betty Davis was. When she found out about this, she basically stormed Jack Warner's office and camped out until she uh, until she was given the role. Thank God she she got the role because I can't imagine anyone else doing a better job than Betty Davis. So um, let's see. Now the film was the, the screenplay was by Casey Robinson, who who did a lot of work at Warner Brothers and a lot of the Betty Davis classics. 
And it was based on a novel, a very successful novel by Olive Higgins Prouty. And it had some interesting things in it that are, that are quite memorable to film buffs. For one thing, uh, there was a sort of a, a, a trick that Paul Henry came up with, supposedly, how to uh, put two cigarettes in his mouth and light both of them and then take one of them out without dropping the one that was still in his mouth and then giving it to Betty Davis. And he, he did that, I think, three times during the film. It became very, uh, very iconic. Now, he always said that the two of them came up with that, that idea between them. She always said that she came up with it herself. But I think the truth is that it, it had been done in an earlier Warner Brothers film by George Brent. And I need to do some research on that. But I don't think that it was original for Now Voyager. But that, that really doesn't matter. It's also very famous for its, its last line, which is said by Betty Davis, where she's in a room alone with Paul Henry, and they, they've just done the cigarette thing, and they've... They've uh, blown the smoke out and mingled the smoke into each other, which is always a symbol of, uh, you know, coming together uh, sexually or romantically. Uh, so anyway, he, he, they're having a conversation and he says, um, Charlotte, will you be happy? And she said, oh, Jerry, don't let's ask for the moon. We have the stars. And then the camera goes up into the, the night sky where you see the stars and the, the music rising. It's just absolutely beautiful. And I dare you not to tear up when you when you see that last scene. Okay, so what else is going on here? We have, of course, Betty Davis, uh, Betty Davis, Claude Rains, and Paul Henry also worked together a few years down the road, 1946, in a film called Deception, which also was directed by Irving Rapper. And um, wasn't nearly as good as now Voyager, but it's, it's a great, great film to watch, to watch all these actors together. Paul Henry would also eventually direct Betty Davis in a film called Dead Ringer in 1964. Uh, and she, would, she had already worked with Claude Rains in a, uh, an earlier film called Juarez, and they would work together again in uh, Mr. Skeffington, two years after now Voyager, another successful film. So we also have Gladys Cooper, who was just a great, great actress. She had been on the English stage going all the way back into the 1910s. She was born in 1888, and she was making she, she was making a successful career as an actress before the First World War. And she made uh, a string of silent films, and then eventually came to Hollywood in 1940, where she start, she started doing a lot of supporting roles and character roles, a wide variety of films, really successful. She would also do low budget films. For example, she was in a um, a universal low budget horror film called The Black Cat in 1941, which also had Betty Davis and Alan Ladd. Betty Davis, Bela Lugosi, sorry, <clears throat> Bela Lugosi, and Alan Ladd. And uh, so she did a lot of things, and she. Uh, her, she had a career that spanned seven decades, and she eventually went into television and died in 1971. Let's see, we also have a great cast of actors here. Bonita Granville, a young actress who was only about 19 when she made this, uh, had made a big splash in a film called These Three back in 1936, uh, nominated for Best Supporting Actress, and later on became a producer after she got out of acting. Under the name Bonita Granville Rather, she was the producer of the Lassie TV series, which was very successful on television back in the 50s and 60s. We also have John Loder, Ilka Chase, Lee Patrick, great character actress from Warner Brothers, who was also the secretary of Sam Spade in The Maltese Falcon. Very, very well-known, familiar face. Franklin Pangborn, of course. Do I really have to describe Frank Franklin Pangborn? Was uh, He showed up in... Dozens and dozens of films, usually just uh, very brief scenes where he played the the finicky waiter. And on, on this film, he's uh, he's the, one of the crew's directors uh, trying to organize social stuff. So he's he's fluttering around and talking very quickly and all that. And just a really funny guy. Mary Wicks, Mary Wicks is in it. This was um, she played the nurse, nurse Dora Pickford. And she's very, very funny and very, very good. She had made her film debut just earlier that same year, 1942, in a film called The Man Who Came to Dinner, which also starred Betty Davis. And Mary Wicks went on to have a long, long career, uh, films and television, just a terrific face. So what else do we have here? Um, let me see. I guess that's all I wanted to say. Finally, the title of the film which of course comes from the novel, is taken from 
a line of poetry by Walt Whitman from his very famous Leaves of Grass. And I'll read that to you to close. <clears throat> the untold want by life and land ne'er granted. Now, Voyager, sail thou forth to seek and find. Thank you for watching and uh, comments are welcome.